and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and what I hope might be a spectacular puzzle today. I have to say, uh, well, in fact, let me tell you a little story about this puzzle. This puzzle uh, was sent to us um, by its author, Nicholas. It's called Chaotic Equality, uh, a few, I think a few months ago. Uh, and I sent it on to a couple of testers who have, I think battled with it manfully to no avail. <laughs> so we sent it to another tester uh, and, and then the trail went quiet. Uh, and anyway, the, the puzzle was, has been recommended a couple of times to us in, in the intervening period and it was recommended to us again yesterday. So I looked it up on Logic Masters Germany to see if it appeared there. It has appeared there. It has a 100% approval rating and the dreaded five stars out of five for difficulty. So it's a monstrously difficult puzzle. But I got the chance to read some of the comments and some of the greatest solvers and setters in the world are saying that this is one of the most brilliant puzzles they have ever seen in their lives. Anyway, so I sent, I, I went back to the tester yesterday and said, did, did you have any luck solving this? And he says, well, coincidentally enough, I have just solved it. And this is one of the cleverest things I have ever seen. So I think it's taken one of our testers about a month to solve it. So this could be a very long video. And for that, if it is very long, I really apologize. But the praise that I've been seeing for this uh, is is absolutely, well, not no, unique is unique is too much because some of the puzzles we get sent are, are you know, they are eulogized to the hilt. But this one apparently is something very, very special. And I think I have done a puzzle by Nicholas before. Um, and I think I thought that was brilliant. But I had that, that is just a very vague memory. Uh, and I'll read you the rules of this puzzle in a moment or two. But I have a few things to mention first. Uh, tonight at 10 o'clock UK time, Mark and I are going to be streaming our latest attempt at the game Teji. So we'd love to have your company for that if you're around. Um, then tomorrow is the 1st of February and that means it's monthly reward day if you're a patron of the channel over on Patreon and you'll have the chance to win the Glum Plushy Hippo <laughs> because it's Glum Hippo Sudoku Hunt. Um, sort of themed around uh, paleontology um, for t and uh, probably I think a little bit easier than the J. Dyer hunt and the Fistimafel hunt. So if you found that those were really hard, do make sure you try Glum Hippo's hunt tomorrow. Um, because it might be slightly easier, we're worried about how many people might solve it. So what we're going to do, we're going to run the competition as usual until the 20th of February. But if you want to shout out on the channel for finishing all the puzzles, then you'll have until the 15th of February uh, to do that. Um, but there, there is also, in, in order to enter the competition, you don't have to finish all of the puzzles. All will be revealed in that regard tomorrow. Um, oh, but I need to do the winner. The winner of the J. Dyer Sudoku hunt. I need to announce that and drum roll please. The winner is Math Dan Mom. Could be Math Dan Mom. Oh, well, I just, that's the same thing. I've said it twice now. I, I don't really understand how to say Math Dan Mom efficiently, but it is Math Dan Mom. You did win. Well done. And I will be in touch about your prize this afternoon, hopefully. Um, next birthdays I well I, it's a it's a birthday with an apology it comes with an apology today Ray it's your birthday well it was, was your birthday yesterday I believe and your children Robert and Nathan um, well they wrote to us by snail mail to let to let us know this we had a letter from Robert and um, the problem with that is that Mark opened the letter and Mark then forgot to tell me that, that I needed to read your birthday yesterday. So Mark sends his apologies. I am guilt free for once. Um, but Ray, I know that you're something of an expert at the Times crossword. They say you always get it done in less than 20 minutes. You do it on paper. And that, that well, that, that is a very good time, as you know. So Ray, we're delighted that you watch the channel and I hope you have an absolutely brilliant birthday today, replete with copious amounts of chocolate cake and possibly ice cream as well. Um, and then only the only other thing for me to mention is some more names for people who correctly finished the whole J. Dyer hunt. So very well done to Jana Chernobylski, I think, uh, Monty Coulomb, Joshua Rogers, Alan Bagg, Andrew Cameron, Stephen Lip, Marcus Sockel, Ethan Batty, 
Jameson Skalinski, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Julie Bernhardt, Zoe Delart, Chiswick, or no, Cheswick, not Chiswick, <laughs> Cheswick, uh, David Clare, Max Chase, Josiah Fong, John Alistair Warwicker, Jessica Friesen and Winnie Schmidt, Steve Williams and Benoit Massard. All of you, very well solved indeed. Now, now we can we'll banish the plushie for a moment and I will read you the rules of Chaotic Equality by Nicholas. Here they are. Divide the grid into regions, each consisting of nine orthogonally connected cells. Um, okay, orthogonally connected means sharing an edge. So we've got to basically build a whole load of regions in the puzzle that are nine cells large. Um, each row, column and region must contain the digits one to nine once each. So that makes sense. Each line must pass through at least two regions. Each line must pass through at least two regions. Right, so when we do the region division, we need to make sure that these lines sit in different regions. A line segment consists of the digits along the line within a region from the point that line enters that region to when it next leaves it. The sum of digits along each line segment along a line must be the same. Different lines can have different line segment totals. Right, so that is a complicated way, I think, of saying that this is a region sum line puzzle. So what we're going to have to do, let's imagine we worked out that that was a region and we worked out that this was a region. And let's look at this line. Let's do another region down there. We'll make... Uh, well, let's make it a realistic region. It could, it could be that, could it? Maybe. So there we go. I've built three nine cell regions there. And I want to examine what these rules mean by reference to this line here. So a line segment consists of the digits along the line within a region from the point the line enters the region to when it next leaves it. Right, so that's a line segment. That's a different line segment. And that's a line segment. Um, and the sum of the digits along each line segment along the line must be the same, right? So those two digits, whatever they add up to, is the same as those two digits. We, we sum these, is the same as whatever that digit is. So if this digit was a nine, ah, why did I type three? Uh, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, this could be a two, that could be a seven, that could be a three, and that could be a six. And I think that would be a legitimate way of organizing uh, this state of affairs. Um, there we go. So let's reset the puzzle now because there is one more sentence to the rules. It says digits in a circle indicate the number of cells that are part of a line in that cell's region. Right. Oh, I should have, I should, am I going for, can I read? Oh, I can. Okay, right. Let, let, Oh, okay, so I've messed this up because that one doesn't have a circle in it. This one has a circle in it. And what we would fill into this circle, I think, would be a two. Because there are two lines. Seg oh, no, three. There's another one there. One, two, three. So that would be a three and it would clash there. So we'd have to make this something different. We'd make that five, four. That would be three. And I think that then we would. It would be quite funny if this was correct. Um, so digits in a circle indicate the number of cells that are part of a line in that cell's region. One, two, three. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's how the rules work. Do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Now, how on earth do you get cracking with this? I mean, this is proper carte blanche, isn't it? There's I mean, it's almost oxymoronic in the sense that you've got region sum lines. Normally, normally region sum lines puzzles are quite difficult, even when you have the regions. Here, the regions are unknown. It's not even as if the lines are very long either. Then they're, they're in some cases incredibly short. I suppose you could never have a two cell line. No, you could, uh, okay, you could never have a two cell line in this puzzle. Let's think about why that is. I mean, hopefully it's fairly obvious. But if you did have a two cell line, it says lines have to go into at least two regions. So that would be in a region. That would be in a different region. 
but we know that that segment has to sum to the same as that segment, so these would both be the same digits, thereby breaking the rules of Sudoku. So the minimum length of line is 3. Um, now, so for a line of length 3, yes, okay, so lines of length 3, and we have got 3 of those, I think what we can't do, let's look at this one for a moment. I don't think you can have three different colors on the line, can you? Because again, these three digits would all add up to the same number. Well, this would, whatever this was, if that was a four, then the total of the line segment in purple would be four, which means the total of the line segments in green would have to be four. So you get four, four, four along there. So I feel like, and now is that the same if you've got a, a bent one. Yeah. I think it's the same. What if you... The only thing I'm just mulling over for a moment... What if you had a re... I'm not even sure this is possible to do it. I don't think it's possible to do it, so maybe I can ignore it. I was sort of imagining what would happen if you had those two as one colour and that as a different colour. And that sort of joining up like that. But obviously it couldn't do that. But um, Because this would be isolated and couldn't be nine cells large. Uh, no, okay. So I, th I think... The three cell lines have to be divided into two different regions. But of course, that's not very helpful <laughs> now we think about it, because how are we going to do that? Uh, there seem to be an awful lot of ways. What are the circles? The circles are telling us how many. Oh, maybe there's something meta going on here. So. The sum then of all of these Oh no, right. Ah ah I have something. Okay. What I was what I was about to do was to to say that was it true to say that the sum of all the line segments must equal the sum of all the circles. And that probably is true. But what I think is a more sensible thing to think about is can any of these circles be in the same region as each other? Let's say those two cells were in the same region as each other. Well, that's broken the puzzle, hasn't it? Because this region, the green region, it will collect some lines from somewhere. Let's give it some lines. And therefore, if this was the region, I think it's got the wrong number in it. Let's, let's extend it slightly. So now that cell would be one, two, three, four. But so would this cell because it's counting the number of line cells in its region. You can't put two fours in the same region of the puzzle. Aha. So what that tells us is. Oh, and that's right. OK, so that's why we've got nine of these. We've got nine circles because none of them can be in the same region as each other, which means that, right, well, it means that these two are in different regions. Um, I don't know whether I'm meant to color each of these in nine different colors straight away now, possibly. So each of these circles is in a different region. And we know that every cell in the grid is in a region, so every line is counted by a single... Well, the contents of every line must appear in these sums, mustn't they? So we've got 9 circles and 5, 10, 16, 19, 23, 27 and another five, 32, 32 line segments. So the sum of all the circles is 32, which is quite low, actually. 
it's averaging just over three. Okay, so probably what we're going to have to do is to think about difficult cells to get into circles. Like, hmm, that cell is fishy, isn't it? Because I can see that right. Here we go. Here's something. What, what region or what circle? No, that's a better question. What circle does row one, column one attach to? Now, I don't think it's that, because if it was that, how do you get a second region to touch this line? And I don't think that's going to work, because if I try and nest a nine cell region, something like that, in the middle of these purples, and then ring that nine cell region with a purplification an efficient purplification indeed there's no way i could have been more efficient than that than hugging the boundary this is going to be way more than nine cells large three six nine thirteen so thirteen is greater than a nine cell region and that won't work so what we can't do as well we can what we can't do is make this purple it won't it isn't possible that's too far away to be purple because again even if we're efficient that's 11 cells that doesn't look like it's going to work three seven no that's more than nine isn't it that one now now well I don't think that one works, actually. If that's purple... I mean, the, the obvious thing you could do is that, but I don't think that works, because now what's this? I need to get this line to have two regions touching it, so that would have to be a different region. But there's only one cell here, so this line segment would add up to a single-digit number, a Sudoku digit. But we know that four different digits in Sudoku, the minimum they can sum to, is 10. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, which is more than 9, and therefore not capable of going into this cell. So the only way... Right, let me think about this. It's the same point, isn't it? The only way that this can be purple would be if I can get another region to touch this this line along in row one but if I do that the moment I try and do that even if I make the smallest and the most compact region I can which will be a three by three anything else I mean imagine if you tried to build you know a skyscraper type tower you can see that that sort of region is going to really scupper it you're going to get get a much higher total than the 13 we got here when we use the three by three so there's no way this this just doesn't work it just doesn't work we can't have that as purple so now um one one two three four five six seven eight that's too far away so it's got to be this one i think is the only thing that purple can attach to that's already fascinating isn't it, isn't it? The fact that you can actually pinpoint this, that this cell here can only join one circle. I'm just, I'm just slightly nervous that I've missed something there. I can't see, I can't, I really can't see how to attach it to another one. If it is this one, and I think it is, then that one, okay, we'll make we'll make that the fluorescent green. Because obviously these are in different regions. Now I've got to Well actually if I got to be efficient, I've got to be efficient here. That's eight so yes. Oh right. So purple can well these two purples have to join together. But what I've just noticed is that that is an eight cell streak. Eight plus one is nine. And so in other words to join these together, 
I can't go me I can't go a meandering. All right, we cannot go walk about. We can't sort of go this way and then join up the purple. We have to always be moving in the direction of this purple cell. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean we either have to be moving up or northwards or we have to be moving westwards. We can never go south and we can never go east because any move we went that sort of took us off that if we if we go a meandering then we're going to find that by the time we correct the meander and end up back where we're meant to be going, we're going to have taken too many cells. It's not going to be a nine cell region. So what that tells us is actually, well, it's, it's almost telling us what I did then is correct. In order to correct connect this up with this, I can't go north because then I'm going to have to go through green. So I'm going to have to go there. Now, if I then go north, I've got the same problem I had before, haven't I? If I go north now, the only way of connecting purple up is to take the whole of the top row. And now this cell is going to be in a different region and it's going to have to be the sum of those four digits. Again, that's going to make that a double digit number. So I can't duck into the top row too early. So I have to, con I can't go north, so I have to go west. Um, so what colour is that then? That's green. Because if that was a third colour, then I've got to put in another region here that I'll have to I'll have to avoid to connect these. Oh, this is lovely. This is just lovely. Right. So this is green. But now I can probably go north. Um, or can I? No. I think the answer is no, for a lovely reason. Try this one out for size then. Let's try and go north now and then go across. So I've built my region. This has to be in a different region. But those two digits are the same. by Because, because we know that the total for this line is the sum of those three digits. So that digit is going to go in there. Imagine it was eight. That will be an eight. That will be an eight. And you can't put eight in purple anymore. There's no way to do it. What's wrong with that logic? I mean, that's beautiful if that's right. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That feels right, doesn't it? So if you set up this pattern, that has to not be purple. This is demonstrably not purple. These two digits must be the same number and you can't put that digit in purple. Right, so that means this cell is not purple, so that's another green cell. We must extend the purple again. Now, OK, what would happen if purple went north? Well, from here, it went south one. Well, then it would have to close directly like that. But then we've got the same problem we've been worrying about before. All of these now have to be green because they can't be purple. And this cell would have to sum to the four cells in green, therefore. So I think that digit is not purple, which means that one is. So this is some new color that we haven't yet, we haven't yet introduced into our thinking. We will make that color hmm, yellow, I think. These are the decisions that I view as very important. We're going to make this yellow. Um, OK, so again, I, I may, all right, maybe the simpler way to ask the question is to say, what colour is that? That cannot be green, because if it's green, that's got to be purple. And that gives us the, prob the counting problem. So that's got to be purple. Now, can that be green? If that's green, we've got three cells there in green. We've got two cells there in purple. Uh, might be possible. I'm not sure. All right, let's try it the other way around. If that's purple, then that has to be a different color altogether. So that could be, well, it could be yellow or it could be something else. And we'd have a single cell total here is adding up to that domino and that domino would have the same total. So if that was like a five, that could be a two, three, and that could be a one, four. And 
Hmm. Okay, I don't actually see how to do that. Right, so what we'll do is we'll take the low hanging fruit, which is to note that green has now been fenced in. So we need to build green out to be at least, well, exactly nine cells. At least nine cells? What are you talking about, man? Um, okay, so if that was green, that would be four. So we've got to go five, six, seven, eight. We can't go into another circle, can we? we right, so even if we take that cell, we have to take that U pentomino in order to allow this to potentially reach a count of nine because we can't bump into this. Now, if we don't take this, we could, we've got to extend this one more. And it could go there or here. But it can't actually... It can't go there. Ah, here's a point. That is a new colour. This cell here is a new colour. Because if it was green... It would be the we couldn't also make this green because then green would have reached it it would be core eight it would have it would have reached nine cells which would mean all three of these cells were different colors but they all have to have the same total within their color so those two digits would be the same so green never comes into this cell let's actually mark that off right here we go yes look we can do some we can do some line boundaries here um Right, okay, so in fact we can generalise that point, can't we? Because this cell cannot be purple and this cell cannot be purple because purple has to join to its friends up here with its ninth cell. Those two are the same region. Well, okay, and I'm actually going to say I don't think that region can be yellow, or that might be wrong actually. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. No. All right, this region is not yellow because were it to be yellow, if I connect these up as efficiently as I can, I haven't touched a circle with yellow and I've used eight cells. And there's no way to get to a circle with a ninth cell, so that's not yellow. So this, this domino is a new color and of course, therefore, it is blue. That is a blue domino of blueliness. Um... Okay, so the blue, well, the blue domino, I think, could go into a whole variety of places. I'm, I'm not sure it can get that one, but it can definitely get that one. It can definitely get that one. It can probably get that one. That is an interesting cell. That is a three, I think. Because that is counting the number of line segments that purple um, contains. Well, it's one, two, and it's one of those two, whichever one of those is the final purple cell. So that cell is a three, and we have a digit, but it's not a three in the corner. And I missed one of those yesterday. I'm so sorry, Zeta Math. Um, so there was no song yesterday, and there should have been, apparently. Uh, okay. What, right, right, so what's the count for this one? Uh, we don't know. It's either two or three, depending on whether that cell is taken. So that's two or three. There's no problem with them being the same number, is there? No, there can't be. Of course there can't, because we worked out there weren't 45 line segments. So we can't, we can't have these all different anyway, because if they were all different, the secret would come into play, and there, there would need to be 45 because each of these would have to contain a different digit and all the different Sudoku digits add up to 45. Right, so what we need to do now is what exactly? Uh, <laughs> I haven't got a clue. Has anyone got a clue? And if so, you're probably clever enough to invent the time machine and come and tell me. That one can't join to that one for the same reason that one couldn't join to that one. So what one does that one join to? That one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It doesn't join to this one, actually. It doesn't join to that one. That's 10. <laughs> okay, so this one joins to that one, I think. That's weird. That is so weird. So this cell, as well as this cell only having one natural partner, this cell only has one natural partner. six seven yeah it does it just gets there so okay well that's actually interesting because the the only only circle that this cell can find is this one but again it has to do it very efficiently so what we can do is that because we know that each movement we make along the path from this point to here is either going to be a northwards or a westward movement again we cannot go a meandering so um Right. So can we... Well, what's that cell is the next question then. Now, I think this only has two possibilities, although that might be wrong. I think this can only be yellow or blue. I mean, if this was yet, if this yellow tries to leave as much space as it can in this region for other regions to come into this area, it could come down like this. It can't take four cells on this line because then that we'd have the we'd have the four cells adding up to one cell problem again. So it could probably take those three cells and then start to wend its way over. But. Okay, so it, I think that's the most amount of room that yellow can can provide for other things. I admit this might be fine, actually, then. No, 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 no. No, it's not fine at all, because that, well, it might be possible for this to be coloured something other than blue, but it's not possible for this to join up to another circle. It's too far away. That's the, that's the point about this one, is what circle does it join to? Now, if it's not yellow, the nearest circle it can reach is that one, and that's clearly 10 away, 8, 9, 10. So to, to, ring, to get out and get round, it's, ne it's always going to take too many. 1, 2, 3, 4, yes, yeah, it's, it's far too many. It's not even close, actually. So... That cell is yellow. Therefore, well, therefore, here's a beautiful, here's, I have to say, this so far is stunning. Right, what colour is this? Remember, yellow has to be efficient. So yellow can't go off. It's not that it, it can only not meander on the path it's on. It can't, can't branch and have lots of different different ways it goes in different directions because that is effectively inefficiency and we're trying to be efficient so that is this cell here whatever that is is most certainly not yellow of course this cell is definitely red <laughs> looking at the looking at the options available this is a red cell ah ah aha oh this is beautiful this yeah, no, this is right. This is beautiful. I know how this line divides up now. And I know that because this digit is a single digit. It, it, it's the total for the line, isn't it? The only cell, the only line segment in yellow on this line is that cell. So imagine this was a seven. Well, then we know that every other line segment along this line has to contain digits that sum to seven. None of them can be a single cell total. So if this red digit was the only red cell on the line, it would be a seven. So it can't be the only one, which means that one must be red. Now, now what do we do? We've got two more cells to allocate, but if either of them was just one color, again, they would still be, they'd be seven again. So this domino cannot contain, we, can, we can't put a third red uh, uh, on this line. Because if we did, that cell would be a 7. So we need to make sure this is a domino. 
In other words, we need to do this and this and that, and these two are the same color. And we're going to make that color mm, tricky. Might have to go with orange, which I never like putting next to red, but at least we've got the black delineation. So, right, that seven is total and utter hypothesis as well. So let's take that out. It's absolutely remarkable, isn't it, that just this collection of circles and a few lines is allowing us to build up. It's, it's allowing us to build the regions. Now. Just wondering what this connects to now. I don't think, well, again, it can't connect to that because we can't put a nine cell region here and, and loop around it in nine cells. So that red region, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It can get that one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It might be able to get that one, although that might put some pressure on this one. One, two, three, four. Can we, I wonder if it's impossible to leave to leave a nine cell region. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Bobbins, no, it's not impossible. Right, if, if, if orange did that, and then red did that, then I think orange has nine and red has nine. Okay, so, so red, can get to this one and it can get to this one i don't know if i don't think it can get to that one one two three if it, i mean if, if it can only just get to this one it can't get to this one one two three four five six seven eight nine ten no that doesn't work right so red joins to one of those two um one two three four five six seven eight nine but it all right it always has to ah ah ha 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 right it has to be efficient it has to be efficient. So however it however it gets to whichever one of these that it wants to go to, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, it's always got to be constantly moving in that direction. So that cell's not red. Because if that cell's red, red has in effect been inefficient by not constantly trying to go east and south. It's sort of taken a detour a bit north. And if we took that, Let's just prove it to ourselves. If we take that, we've only got six cells now to complete the orthogonal connection. That is not going to work. We need we we don't we don't get there. So this cell is probably yellow. I want to say, but I'm not prepared to. I'm not prepared to put my house on it. So this cell is red. And that cell is most certainly not red. So again, I can do this now. The question now is what color is that one? Um, well. It's got to be yellow, doesn't it? If that's not yellow... That's yellow. You know, yes, it has to be yellow because the yellow is going to box this cell in. Let's try and make this something else. If we try and make that grey and not yellow, yellow has to do that to connect to yellow. And that cell's fenced in as a one cell region. So it's actually not too difficult to see that that's yellow. But if that's yellow, remember we had to be efficient on yellow. So now this cell's not yellow because... If that was yellow, I don't think we'll be able to get yellow to correct, con connect anymore. Six, we've only got three more to do it. We can't do it. So that cell is now not yellow. So yellow comes here, and that means that's got to be purple. And if that's got to be purple, that's the final purple. So that cell's got to be green. And look at that. Look at that. We've suddenly got something here. We've got all greens done. All purples done. We haven't got all yellows done. We've only got a modicum of yellow, yellow, yellow leanness in the grid, but we have at least 
we have at least made a bit of progress. What colour is that? That's quite a good question. I think that's blue. If this was not blue, let's make that grey this time. If that's... How does blue get to a circle? There's no way. Because although I haven't built it yet, there is a wall of yellowliness that's going to somehow connect these up. So we can't get blue cutting across the, the yellow wall. So if this wasn't blue, blue is stuck here and it can never get a circle. So that cell's blue. Which probably means that cell's blue. Um, we... We don't know where red joins yet, do we? Oh, I know what I can do. <laughs> this is so... <laughs> Sorry, I had to do it. It makes it, it it looks better to me. I know it's not really advanced to solve terribly far. Um, oh, I know what I can do. Oh, Simon, look, I know what that is now. It's three. Ah, so it's we've got two threes now. No, I don't think that does anything at all. Although, maybe we can do some, maybe we've actually got to do some thinking about Sudoku here. Those two digits, where do they go in purple? They obviously don't go in those cells, so they go in two of those three cells. Those three digits have to appear in green, so those three digits are the same as those three digits. What's the mathematics of this line now? It's three cells there summing to those two cells. That's not going to do it, is it? This is one cell summing to two cells. This one is... Ah, okay. We might be able to do something with this line because this line needs to have a different colour on it, a colour that's not yellow. If that was blue. Hmm, I don't think that works, but I'm not exact. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Let's, but I think we have to think about this. This three cell line. Let me just read the instructions again. If we go a line segment consists of the digits along the line within a region from the point that line enters that region to when it next leaves it. Yeah, what I'm worried about here is this. Uh, let me show you. If I make that blue. Because I, I'm thinking about how I'm going to divide this line into different colours. And when we, when we started the puzzle, we said, OK, a three cell line has to be. I thought in three different, well, in two pieces, a two and a one not in three different colours, but what I suddenly worried about here was this. So this line this line now it's in yellow there, it leaves yellow and then it enters yellow again. Some of the digits the some of the digits along each each line segment must be the same. Right, so that this doesn't work, I don't think, because 
I think this 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 in effect collapses to being three different colors. Although this line, those two cells are in the same region, because the line has left this region and then re-entered it again, I have to treat these separately. And if I have to treat them separately, all three digits there would be the same number, whatever the total is for the line. I'm just going to read that one more time. Um, Second consists of the digits. A line segment consists of the digits along the line within a region from the point that line enters the region. Okay, to the point it leaves it, yes. So, th so that is a solitary line segment and that is a different line segment. And these have to have the same total in them. So these two digits are the same and they're going to be the same as that, which is not right. Now, that I think is good for us because let me explain why because what i could see very quickly is that if i if i try to make this cell blue this cell being blue as well doesn't work because remember i've got to connect yellow up efficiently and now there's no way to get blue to touch a circle because all these cells have to be blue there's eight of them and i can't get i can't get it to attach so this doesn't work but i think what that means it's a lot very very complicated but that means that effectively we can't duck down with yellow here this cell has to be yellow it simply cannot be blue and if that cell has to be yellow that cell i was going to say it has to be well that might have to be red i'm not sure i don't think that cell can now be blue because it's definitely not yellow because we need to make sure that this re line reaches two regions yellow has to maintain its efficiency so it has to come here yellow has to maintain its efficiency so it has to come here blue is getting fenced in one two three four five six seven eight so one of these is the last yellow and this cell well we know that that cell's not yellow because the last yellow we know that's this cell is not yellow so we can fence this off the last yellow is here or here so we can do that line segment. Um, now, does that have to be red? No, what if that was red? No, it doesn't at all. Okay, so we don't know what that is at all. Bobbins. Um, ah, but yellow is another three because that's one plus two more and neither of those cells has a line segment in it. So three, we've got three threes in the grid. That feels, that's almost a three in the spotlight. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. Um, why are all these threes? Is this, is this meant to be telling me it's very hard to put threes into these two regions, perhaps? Three in blue, has that suddenly become difficult? No, I don't think so. Three, four, five, six, seven. No, that can be a three. Um, wow. Okay, so what do I do now? This is another of those points in a puzzle where I just have not got a clue. I've got no feel. I've got no feel at all for where the weakness is in this puzzle. The Where does three go in this row? It's not in green. It's three's already in green. It's not in yellow. So three's either there or there. But that, why couldn't this have a three on it? No reason at all. Why couldn't that be a three? no reason at all um, ah, does that have to be orange if orange did, uh, hang on how does that work how can we make enough room to leave a re so, so I'm thinking about 
I don't know, maybe we can do it like that. I oh, know that red, no, red has to, red has to get to one of these two, doesn't it? So let's say red tries to get that one. And let's try and do it like this. So if red does that, and then orange does that. So I'm trying to keep orange away from this circle. I don't think it can. There's just not enough room, is there? In fact, in fact, this is 10 cells as well. I don't think there's a way of connecting this to here or here and leaving behind enough room for this to be in a different nine cell region. So I think that is orange. But doesn't really tell us what red is. We proved that if red went there, orange can exist as a nine cell region. And if red goes here, it's even easier for orange to exist. Maybe it's this one then. Does that have to be, does that have to be blue? Could be blue. If it's not blue, if it's not blue, then blue has to get, get out. And that would have to get out. Uh, that's maybe worth thinking about. Okay. What happens if this is not blue. That feels like there's quite a lot of tension in this part of the grid because blue obviously needs lots more cells. Now, how does it get those cells? Well, bear in mind that gray has to get out without hitting another circle. So gray has to take that cell, which means blue's got to come through there, which means gray's got to come down here, which means this is some new region. Let's just give it orange for the moment. So why isn't this impossible? And the answer is it probably isn't. Where does grey get a three from in this version of the world? That is a good question. That is a weird question. Wow. Wow, that, this doesn't work. I don't think this works. I'm tempted to say pause the video and see if you agree with me. But let me try and play this out in my head. So, if we're in this world where we've tried to make this cell not blue, grey has to have a 3 in it somewhere. Now that's not three by this three. There's no three down here. There's not going to be any gray threes in any of these cells at all. It's impossible. So gray has to get, it either has to have a three in its circle or it's got to get a three from some, it's got to loop round blue and somehow pick up a three. How does it do that? How does it do that? One, two, three, four, five. It's got four more cells to get one from. It can't get there. That's five cells. It can't get there without cutting blue off. Well, it's not even, well, it can't get there without cutting blue off. That's, that's the only way, yeah, the only way it gets a three from here, if that's a gray three, you have to, to be efficient and you have to do that. And blue has not got nine cells. So that's not the gray three. And what this all means, which I think is 
potentially the most beautiful thing about this is that the only place that grey can get its three from is its circle. But it can't, that's impossible. And it's impossible because how do we, how do we make sure that the grey three or the grey region now only has three line segments in it? It's got two already. It's allowed one more. <laughs> it's got nowhere to go. It can't do it. It can't get anywhere else because it needs to grow. Even if we keep, even if we take all these grey cells up here, that's six. It's got to take three more cells. Which ones should we pick? That one? Well, what's its next one after that? It's another another line segment. That becomes a four. This one? Well, the next one. Next one's a line. Segment. That's magical. That is absolutely magical. So, well, this is beautiful. Well, it's not, no, no. Well, it is beautiful. It's beautiful if this is intended. But what it does tell us is that this cell is not a different color to blue. So that is blue, uh, which means that's blue because we can't put another region, nine cell region into that cell. So we've now got five blues. And we've still got the question about where blue gets its three from, but it's a much less pressured question than it used to be. Probably. It's probably a much... Well, actually, hang on. <laughs> hang on. Where does blue get its three from? Let me just think about that for a second. It's not allowed to get it from any of those cells. It's not allowed to get it from that cell. It's obviously not going to be able to get it from down here because it would have to loop around a nine cell region that emanates from this spotlight here. So it's not allowed to get it from any of those cells. So either this is itself a three, which is going to be very difficult for it to be, or where else can it, sorry, I need to highlight this again. Where else is blue getting a three from? At the moment, we're on a count of five. Ah, so we can get one there. That's the only other place it can get one from here. Oh, and it works. Ah, you rotten thing. Right, okay. So this doesn't have to be a three because if that's a three, Oh no, then I'd have a three in the circle. Ah! Ah! <laughs> What's going on? Good grief. Right. So I think, I now think this does have to be a three. If, if this wasn't the blue three, I think the only other place that we can reach with this five cell region which could contain a Sudoku 3 is there. And we can reach that, but, it, but we have to do it very precisely. And we create that nine cell region and we can put the three there. But the moment we do that, we come and consider what this cell is. One, two, three. We get two threes in blue. Doesn't work. So that I think is a blue three. And if that's a blue three, Well, that's the three in row three now. Where does th where does row three get a three from? It's got to be there because those that can't put one anywhere else. But I think more interestingly than that is how does three now grow? Because I've already got two line segments in blue. I can only put one more in. Now, if I took I've got to get three to take some cells from down here. In fact, oh, in fact, as I, in fact, as I come through this barrier of, 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 of line, I, I can only take one of these cells, but then I'm not going to be able to take any of these lines down there because that would make this a four. So this blue region is going to have to come this way, I think. But I think it's got to come through this cell. Because, right, it definitely doesn't take this one because then it can't get out. If it takes that one, it can take no more line segments. So it would be trapped. So it's not take. So this is some other region, uh, which will make, let's make that gray actually. 
So this is gray. It's probably the same as this. Don't know. Um, but if we took this one as our last cell, then we have to duck this way because we can't take any more line segments. And then this is completely isolated. So we have to take this. This is the only only line segment. Now we've filled our line segments. We are totally quarate on line segments in blue. So that cell, now if that cell was some new color, each of these would have the same number in them. So that is also gray. That means blue comes down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got two more. Oh, but no, I thought it was going to have to come this way, but it doesn't, does it? It could take those two. And then probably you get a grey region coming down there. Hmm, okay, sorry. I thought that was going to be clearer. Um, hmm, hmm, <laughs> okie dokie. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, I don't know. I don't know how that works. Okay, so now we've got to think again. And we've got even more threes in the grid than we had last time. We've now got five threes in the grid. This region needs a three in it. Um, now, where does it get it from? It can't get it from any of these cells and it can't bump into those cells. Now, does that mean Well, it means it's either coming here to collect its three, it's coming through that passageway. We've got to make sure we leave enough room behind for the blue, the blue region to complete itself. One, two, three, that's seven. So that's very, oh, now hang on, it's actually, I've also got to be careful with this. So maybe I can prove that these are the same. If that, if this is not grey, grey comes down here, grey comes down there, this region, oh I see, but that can join to that. Hmm, I don't know. Struggling to see how this works now. Uh, <laughs> I think there's some problem. There's some problem to do with threes, but it's perhaps not a terminal problem. What else could we do here? If I could get this this region built out a bit more. Like if I knew if I knew that was yellow, then I'd know that was blue, and that would mean this would have to get its three from this passageway which would put pressure on how this could grow. But how do I know that's yellow? That means I'd have to prove this was not yellow. So can I prove red has to do that? I don't think so. That's, that's pretty ludicrous, isn't it? Although, I might, I might be able to prove now that red doesn't join that one. Red, red had to join either that one or that one. If it joins that one now, how do I stop this being a three in the circle and having two threes in the region? Because I've already got two line segments here. If I join this, 
So I'd have to take two of these. But if I take two of these, am I trapping in? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is getting mad. Um, I've got to be. Yeah, yeah. This doesn't work. It doesn't work. Good. I mean, if this this is absolutely ridiculous. By the way, Nicholas, if this if any of this is necessary, frankly, it's absolutely. But abs it's absurd. Not, not. It's absurd because it's too clever. It's just, you cannot do this sort of stuff. Human beings do not have the ability, at least no normal human being has the ability to foresee these things. Imagine trying to build this puzzle with this sort of logic in it. It's completely and utterly absurd. But look, if we're trying to connect reds together without this being a three, the only way I can do that, given that I have to be efficient, is to make the, is to put those two in red and then go straight up like that. That's the only efficient way I can not make this a three because I can't come straight up. That will be a third line segment. So I've got to take two from this line and I can't wander over here because that's then we're going to make it too big a region. So it has to do that and that's that's under that's under provisioned for. Orange has become impossible. So this is not red. Now if that's not red, that is red. Now this one can't be a three. One, two. So we can't, we can't take, okay, so now there are certain paths that are impossible for this one. We can't, for example, do something like that because that will be a three again. So this, which has to be efficient, it's either picking up both of those with something like that or, or none of them. Ah, none of them might be a better option. Although, what's that if I do none of them? Ah, hang on, hang on, hang on. How do I, how do I make this? Yeah, this is the question. How do you make this a two? I.e., i.e., there's no more red lines. Then this has to be a new colour. But that, the problem is, if this sees no more lines, it has to go up. It can't bump into these lines. And now th what colour is this? That this is going to be a, eventually a red wall. And that cannot get out. So this is absolutely impossible. You cannot make that two. We cannot make it three. It therefore has to pick up. And it has to be efficient. So it has to be a four. That is some of the most beautiful th stuff I've ever seen on this channel, Nicholas. That is just absurd. Because now, now I know what red does. I know exactly what red does because red, in order for, to pick up two line segments on an efficient path from here to here, it's got to pick up those two. And if it has to pick up those two, it's got to do that. The only way it can efficiently close. And that is a nine cell region, which I can, of course, then delineate using the power of the black line. And... <laughs> and, and that cell now is that the one that's weak is that going to be a new region or can that join to blue it can't join to blue actually here's a here's a point if that's blue that's blue obviously to connect blue up and that completes blue with a nine cell region but that leaves behind two white squares and only one of them can belong to yellow because yellow's only got one more cell to grow. So that is not that is not blue. So that is probably is it grey or do we not know? I think for the time being we'll make it we'll make it fluorescent green, which is my favourite colour in this palette, and clearly cannot join to that one up there. So this is fluorescent green. So that's fluorescent green. And we know it's not blue, so that's fluorescent green. <laughs> Um, we know it's not blue we do know it's not blue so what's blue doing now oh I mean this is okay 
okay if this is if this is right you have to make a video about this Nicholas and explain how you did this because this is not this is not remotely I I I cannot understand how you constructed this at all I cannot understand how you did it because now I looked at this a moment ago I looked at blue and I couldn't resolve it but somehow or other resolving this red line noting this can't join to blue has fixed blue now because where does blue go given it couldn't join this and this has to come out blue is now resolved because I'm not allowed to take any more line segment cells in blue so I've only got two left I've got to do those two and that completes blue and now grey has to come down the side and now yellow's done actually yellow's done now so the exact ordering of the logic has just been enough but and it's beautiful the way this works is beautiful the consideration of the threes and their positions and stuff but you've had to do this always with an eye to the fact that apparently this is going to lead to a unique solution from a sudoku at the end of it it's i don't understand i just don't understand um now well so now now do we get back to the question of where gray gets its three from oh no gray can be green as well and green could have a three here one two three in fact it can only just be it can only just be green i don't know what that line segment's doing um so right so if gray joins to green then there is exactly one position in the puzzle that can be a three if it doesn't then it can't bump in here so it has to get its three from here but there's not enough oh no well it can't reach there anyway four five six seven eight now it can't reach oh, that's it that's it right we just so i think when i'd originally thought about this again it's the same point it, it's the it's the way that the you know you you extend the regions in just the perfect way at the perfect time so that the logic then applies in a useful way i think when i originally looked at this cell i thought it could come out to here or down this passageway or here both were op options but now now that this domino is attached to gray and gray has got four cells here it can no longer reach this passageway that's five that, that's nine cells so that we couldn't achieve the tenth or well, we could use a tenth but it wouldn't be a nine cell region so the only place that gray gets a three from now is there which converts all of this into gray which gets us more joy in terms of delineating regions now what's this ah <laughs> I had a horrible moment then when I thought it was going to be a three but it's not it's not actually even close to being a three it's a five I'm now seeing um I've only got oh hang on where how many threes have I got in the grid now I've got six where do I've got three more threes to put in where are they living they are living oh where are they living they are living is it that three by three that we've got to put them in I think it's just this little area here this little area I don't really want to shade it but we've got to put three threes in that little area and we have to allocate them one each to the remaining circles because we know these circles are in different regions okay and hmm what about that this those two have to be in the same region don't they yes 
Yes, they do for many reasons, actually. But if these were in different regions, they would both contain the same number. So they are, they are in the same region. Now, if that region joined to that circle, then that is a far too large a region to be nine cells large. That is an 11 cell region. Right, so this joins to that region. So we've got, a three, we've got three cells of a new green region. So I want to say if that's green now, I've broken the puzzle. Because if that's green, all of this has to be green and that's 10 cells of greenliness. So that's not green. That's got to be a new color, which we shall make. Should we go back to purple again? Or should we go back to, I'm gonna to go to blue for a change. So that's gonna be a blue cell. Oh. <laughs> Here is a very, very simple point, which is probably important. Okay. Oh, I've actually I've thought of another point. Oh, okay, I'm going to start off with my second point first, because it's probably a more normal point. The first point is a bit weird. Um, this cell has to get to a circle. There are no circles over here, so it's got to go that way. It's probably got to join this one. Not entirely. Yeah, no, it must do. It must join this one, because if it comes up here, how many... It's not leaving behind nine cells there. That's only seven cells. So it does join to this one. Right, but the other point I was thinking is that green hasn't got a three in it yet. And the threes are only available in that three by three there. So that's got to be green, at least. We might have to come further along. Now I've got four cells in here. Four. Right, so now that cell is not green anymore. If, the, if this cell's green, by the time I add those five cells into green, I've got 10 cells of green. Right, so that one's become blue. What's this line doing in the, in the corner then? We've got, we've got one cell total here. Right, yeah, so we can't split this line into two different colors. Because if we try and do that, how could we do it? There is no way of doing it um, without having a clash in this column because you're going to have a single total in one of those two cells and it's going to clash with the single total there. So though this this little trium ah, so that little triumvirate, oh my phone's buzzing, that's fine. Um, so this little triumvirate is the same color which we will make purple because that makes that the same color. So that two by two is the same color and it either joins to green or it joins to blue. If it joins to blue, it finishes blue and that would push green out here. Um. Hmm. <laughs> um. Ah, here is another point. That cell is not the only... This is lovely again. It's so clever. This cell is not the only green cell um, on this line. Because if green stops, those two digits are going to be the same number. Because that's going to be a line segment and that's going to be a line segment. So green has to continue. So now... Ah, green can still take this. This is so difficult. Um, we've got to somehow find a way of d determining which way. Or is it this one now? That sees two line segments at the moment. It can't be three or four line segments. Ah, oh, for goodness sake. All right, that's sick. That is sick. Right. Okay, I know what that is. And I, I, I can now announce the shape of the orange region. It's the most normal region, let me tell you that. Um, because this digit 
is counting the number of line segments um, in this region here, in, in, its, uh, in its own region, orange. Now it sees two at the moment, so it is at least two. Now the only line segments that have not been allocated in the puzzle yet are these two. So this number must be a two, three or a four, but it can't be a three or a four. It sees them both by Sudoku, so it must be a two. And if it's a two, it never jumps in. It never touches these two. So how does it achieve a nine cell total without touching those? Well, it's got to be, you've guessed it, a three by three region, which, which we can ring fence. So now all we've got to do is work out how this bottom bit works we can yeah okay so that cell can't be green because if that cell's green all of those are green and that's a two digit number because we're adding four digits to it so that at least has got to be blue now if that's got to be blue we can't have any greens interrupting the flow of blue around the perimeter or we will have a problem so we now oh right which is fine that's done it because now we've got seven in blue and we can't join blue to this. We'll have an 11 or a 12 size region. So that's the purple has become green. Green has become quarate. It has nine cells. So those two cells have got to be blue. And we have finished the coloring of, frankly, at this point, I can say one of the cleverest puzzles I've ever seen in my life. Full stop, bar none. That is completely and utterly brilliant. And that cell i know then i know who well, i don't know yet but i'm going to be able to know it one two three four five six seven that is a seven this one is a two i think and i haven't put my threes into any of these regions yet <laughs> the threes had to be in those cells didn't they so okay so green gets a three from one of those cells that's not a three Hang on, so, so where does orange get its three from? It's got to be one of these cells, hasn't it? And where does blue get its three from? Can't be here because the green three is in this row. So it's one of those two cells. I don't believe it. It's still not resolved. Okay. Okay. All right, so now we will do what? We will, how long have I, how, how? How have I had 82 minutes solving this puzzle? That has absolutely flown by. Oh, golly, imagine if I get really badly stuck now. I think I ought to be, that's at least a seven. Uh, I'm actually going to put that in because it's summing three digits that that can't include a three. So that's a minimum of one, two, four, which add up to seven. So that's a seven, eight or a nine. Um, ah, I'm not exactly seeing how to do this. One second. Let me think. What is it I'm meant to be appreciating here? Uh, no, I think it must be something to do. I don't think it is Sudoku. Although I am noting those two digits are the same as those two digits. I will actually just note, notate that. Because where do these two digits go in green? You can see they can't repeat in their rows. So they have to go down there. Okay, ah, okay, so that cell there. It's very slightly restricted. So what I, ca what I could see very quickly about this cell is there have to be two different ways to make it sum. Because if this was a, th well, it can't be a three or a four, but imagine we tried to make it a four then this would have to be a one three and this would have to be a one three. There's only way of one way of making that sum in a domino in Sudoku. So we'd have a big problem in the row, but this might be able to be five because there are two different ways of making five. Maybe it might be possible to be five. I'm not sure, 
but what I can see, okay, so let's put the options in five. In fact, it's not six. I can see it's not six because there's a three on the line here. So if this was six, that would be double three. So it's not six. It's also not nine. I don't know about seven and eight yet, but it's not nine for a simple reason, which is if it's nine and these two cells add up to nine, then that's got to be at least a 10 because those will add up to nine and that will be at least a one. So this is not nine. This is five, seven or eight. Now, which means that this is 5, 7, or 8. The sum of those two is 5, 7, or 8. Obviously, if it's 8, that has to be a 1. And that has to be a 9. That's 8. Right, that's not 8. That's not 8 because it breaks, doesn't it? If, if we make this 8, how do we make that, that A sum work? It's not 2, 6. It would repeat 2 in the, in the region. It's not 3, 5. The three's in its row already. So it has to be 1, 7, oh, it can't, which it actually can't be. I'm now seeing the way, the way I saw that was far more complicated. I was noting there couldn't be a 1 there, but it's actually simple. There's just no way of making the combination work. Right, so that's not 8. This is 5 or 7. So if it's 5, it's very restricted indeed, because this can't be a 2-3 pair. So this would be a 2-3 pair. We'd know the order. That would be 2, that would be 3. All the 3s would get sorted. And this would be a 1-4 pair, and this would be a 1-4 pair. So this, this is going to be 1-2-3-4. No, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. It's beautiful. If that's 5, because this has to be a one, two, three, four quadruple. That digit is at least a five by Sudoku, but these add up to a five. So we're gonna have at least 10 on the line. So that in fact, I think is seven then, which means this, I know I, know I can do that. That's three plus four equals seven. This is now not two plus five, is it? So it's one plus six equals seven which means this is one plus six equals seven, which means this digit is a two because it can't be a one. And that digit is a nine. That's lovely. It's absolutely lovely. I mean, <laughs> you know, you'd be pleased with this if you set this up as a puzzle. You know, if, if you just presented this uh, as with given regions and a region sum line puzzle, this would be lovely logic. Um, but Nicholas has done rather more than that. Right, so what have we got going on in this row now? Five, five, eight, nine to place. Let's have a look at that. So five, eight, nine, that's not five. So there's a five on the line. Uh, so we've either got 13 or 14 here. Right, it's not 13 because that cannot add up to 13. Nine, four, six, seven, Five eight, all unavailable. So that is five nine. That therefore is six eight because it can't be five nine as well. If this is five nine, now that's an eight by Sudoku of all things. I have actually, I mean, I have actually had to do some Sudoku with the threes. Um, this row maybe one three and no, not one three and six. One three and one, three, and five. Oh, I see. Look, that's a three, five pair out of nowhere. So this is a naked single. That's a one, and that's lovely. That gets me a one and a six down here. So the, the remaining digits in grey that we've got to place are two, four, and seven, I think. Which means that which means I can place two in the box. Yeah, this is great. This is great. Two, four, and seven to place. Well. If there was no two on this line, that would be an 11, which is not gonna work. So there is a two on the line and there's a two here. So the two goes there. That cell has suddenly become restricted. Um, and this one, but that one, <laughs> that one I'm seeing, because <laughs> I'm looking for complications. It sees a four, seven pair. It actually sees an, it actually sees a lot of things. It actually does see a lot of things. Because these digits are different, 
if we make that four or seven, you rule you rule that digit out of gray. So it's not four or seven. It's not one, two. It's not three. It's not five. Six. It's six or eight, I think, only. Oh, bobbins. That was almost completely gorgeous. This digit is a sum, isn't it? It's nine, six or nine. Oh dear, okay. Um, what about, what about these, this column? We need four, seven and nine up here. So we have got one and two on this line now by Sudoku, look. So in fact, what are these digits then? Because these digits can't be one, two, three, four, seven, or nine. So they're five, six, or eight, I want to say, by Sudoku, which gives me a five, six, eight triple in the column, which means this square is four or seven by the power of grayskull and a bit of irregular Sudoku trickery. Is that helpful? <laughs> Is that helpful? I don't know. So that digit is the same as that digit. I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether we can do anything clever with that or not. This total here is We've got to add the digit we don't use in this column. Oh, a five is in one of those two cells. Is that helpful? Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. I have a feeling there's some sort of irregular Sudoku trick I should just be seeing in um, row one and row two, but I can't I can't see how to do it. So this is either going to be one, two. It's not it's not one, two and five because there's definitely a five in here. So it's either one, two and six, which would add up to nine. These would have to add up to nine, which you've probably got a zillion ways of doing. Or it's one, two and eight. And these add up to eleven. And they'd either be four, seven, or five, six. No. Okay, so I've got nothing here. What is it I'm meant to be looking at instead? I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. Is it this line? Is this line somehow restricted in a way I can't see? I don't think so. Um, that digit. Okay, that digit is at least a four, I want to say. Because if it, if it was lower than four, it would have to be one. But these two would add up to four then, and that would have to be a one, three pair as well. So this is at least a four. So it's four, five, or six. Because it's got, it's not four, because there's a four already here. So it's, five, okay, this is five or six. This is probably where we should be looking. So this is five or six. So this is eight or nine, by the power of mathematics. Um, and can we rule anything either into or onto this line now? So if this is eight, three, five, two, six, this is a one, seven pair, which I can't see with, it might be impossible, but I'm not seeing why. If this is nine, this is not okay. This 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 isn't two seven three six or four fives. Oh, so there's always a one on this line. It's either one seven or one eight, which is massive. Well, massive. It gives me these two digits then. That's one. That's six. Oh, that's gorgeous. Right. So that six gives me the five here. So now I know it's eight that we're heading for. So there's no eight on these lines now. So this is one seven. Um, 
I'm sure this is doing something. Let me just work out what it is. I've got four and nine to place into those two squares by Sudoku. Okay, I can see something I can do with this eight, which is probably where I'm going to look next. Let me just check whether there's anything simpler. Um... <laughs> There probably is, but I don't know. All right, I'm going to use this eight because at least I've seen something to do with this. So where does where does this eight go in purple? And the answer is in one of those two squares, by simply by Sudoku. Now that means that square there is not an eight. Uh, and the only place I think now eight can go in green is exactly there, which is quite cool. Which means this square's a six, this square's a five, that six gives me a nine here, which resolves that's a seven and that's a four by mathematics. This seven gives me a seven over here, a one here. That gives me a four here, which is, well, okay, I am going to use that actually. Where does four go in this column now? Now it can't repeat in blue. It's not those two digits and it's not there because if that's a four, that's got to be a one three pair and it can't be. So I think we can put four into this column. We can get a nine in the corner. We get a four up here by Sudoku. We can... Oh, I see. So now I know what this line is. This line is one, one, two, six, I think. One, two, six. I haven't got a six in there. So this is adding up to nine. So these two digits have got to add up to nine that's completely beautiful again it's not two seven it's not three six it's not four five so it's eight one and we can just write it in eight and one go into the grid this digit here well that digit there i think is a seven or a nine by the power of uh, sort of the law of leftovers it's a bit of sudoku really I, where does this digit go in green? Well, it's got to be in one of those squares. It's clearly not eight. So it's in a four, seven. It's in one of these two squares and it's not four. So it's seven or nine. And it's in one of those two positions. Okie dokie. Um, let's try. I just tried double clicking ones. It didn't work. Uh, we, what could we do now? The sum, sum here, what, what is this digit? That's, oh no, let's do something easier than that. Nine can, nine can be placed here. Let's do Sudoku. Um, can I do this six, eight pair? That would be very handy. I'm not sure I can. Oh, almost thought I could get six in this column because of this six, but I can't quite. Still got two possible positions. What about... Okay, well, let's come back to thinking about this digit. This digit is... It's clearly not one or two because it's the sum of two digits. It's not three, four or five, so it could be six. Maybe. It maybe could be seven. It can't be eight and it can't be nine. So it is six or seven. Okay, if it's six, it's not two, four here. It's one, five, which we could do. Five, one in those direct, di that direction. If it's seven, it's not one, six or three, four. So it's two, five. So this is always five. And that's one or a two. And if this is a five, what does that mean for the world? Five in yellow? Yes, I can do that. Where does five go in yellow? Not there, not here by Sudoku, not there, because if I put a five there, I can't put five in purple at all. It just doesn't go in. That's a bit strange, but it definitely doesn't go there. So that's got to be five. So now, four, six, eight. These squares are from four, six and eight, I want to say. sure that's somehow resolved I can't see how to do it that's not a four so there's definitely a four in here 
maybe we try this row instead one two eight and nine yes that's an eight nine pair there we go that's probably been available for ages there's a one two pair here so this must be a one two pair i've now got a one two pair in this column which means this square is six seven or eight it's not six so it's seven or eight and i don't believe it but actually i don't think we know do we all right, but this 8-9 pair gives me, locks 8 out of here, it gives me a 4-6 pair, which makes this square an 8. It's, an, it's just stunning, this, because it's still so interesting. Even after, well, 100 minutes now. This 8 is doing my 8-9 pair, it's finishing it off. 8-9, go into the grid. Still haven't got these three, the bane of our existence, uh, sorted out. It's, going, it's probably going to be this one, isn't it? That's going to be the, the thing that reveals everything. What could we do? Do we look at, maybe we check red first. One, two, six, and nine into these squares. Yeah, that's probably not a bad idea because obviously this is the sum of a two-digit total. So it's not one or two. So this is six, which would have to be two, four. Two here, four here. Can that work? Bah, back, but maybe it can. If this is nine, it's not one, eight, three, six, or four, five. It's two, seven. Ah, so that's always two is the point, isn't it? This is four or seven. This being, oh, that two is useful. That two is useful. It's doing some things. It's giving me a one here. It's giving me a two here. It's giving me a one here. It's giving me a six here. Which is giving me a six, eight, seven. Eight in blue. Come on. Is that done it? No, that's not six. I'm seeing by Sudoku. In this column, I need ones, twos, and sevens. So that's two or seven. That's a seven can't be one or two aha so two one six two go into the grid come on please please let me be able to finish this now i mean this this purple box has got quite cluttered hasn't it we need five seven and nine to finish it and that's a naked single apparently that's a nine seven five That did a remarkably small amount of things. <laughs> That's so mean. Uh, okay, let's check. Oh, I don't believe it. Where does 8 go in this column? There's an 8 in yellow already, so 8 must go right to the bottom of the grid. Where it joins a 3-5 pair in blue. And there's a 5 here. That's going to give me my 3s. So 3-5, three, 3-4... Three, three five at last i think we are completely full of threes in the puzzle this square here is not a one that square there is not a two and it's not a nine so that's come down to oh it's a six it's a naked single which gives me the nine here which makes this the seven that's become a nine that's probably been available for a while I've not been looking over on this side of the grid for some time uh i need to put six and nine Yes, that's six. That's nine. That's got to be a two. That's a six. That's a four. I've not got a four in this column, I don't think. And I've not got a one in that box. Wow, please. Without seeing any mistakes, let me just click tick. <laughs> yes. Wow. And the m thing I'm most excited about, about finishing that puzzle, is that that is, quite simply, one of the cleverest puzzles I have ever seen. Well, imagine if I hadn't been able to do it. That, this, this, this needs an audience because it's, it's breathtakingly clever. Um, I can say without fear of contradiction, Nicholas, that had that been you know, a Fistemafel puzzle or a J. Dyer puzzle, people would have lost 
their minds about how brilliant it is. It is absolutely stunning. Um, I don't know how you did that. I don't know how you made it. So it was incredible. The, the use of the, what the threes did in this puzzle, it would be hard to find a any example in Sudoku history of a digit that has been worked as hard as those threes were worked. It was quite incredible. I think we just had those threes in the grid. And by thinking about where three was going to go over in this blue region, you could just do magic with it. Absolute pure magic. I am I'm so thrilled. I'm so thrilled that this puzzle exists. I cannot tell you. I'm looking forward to the comments. It's another enormous video. I, I'm very... I know if you say if you're still here, you want to be here, etc. But I, I can't believe there is, you know, a mass audience for these enormous videos. But and yet to me, there should be because this is breathtakingly brilliant. You know, it, it's just brilliant. And I loved it. And um, now I'm going to go and have my lunch. Thank you so much for watching. If you're still here, let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind and especially when they're full of, of plaudits for these wonderful, wonderful constructions. Good grief. We'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic and the Teji stream.